This video is sponsored by Magellan TV. In the early 1990s, the US Air Force launched a new program to build a next generation advanced tactical fighter. This gave way to a legendary competition between Lockheed and the Northrop Corporation that created the outstanding YF-23. The aircraft had a radical design thanks to its diamond-shaped wings and V-tail, which immediately differentiated it from its competitor. The fighter reached supersonic speed and had been designed to fly undetected to enemy radars. Even though it was a unique aircraft, the US Air Force selected its rival, the Lockheed F-22 Raptor. Many say the Raptor won because it was more agile, easier to maneuver, and could attack at a steeper angle. But in reality, Northrop's issues with previous contracts and its poor standing with the Pentagon also gave Lockheed the upper hand. The competition between both companies shows that a good reputation can sometimes be as important as groundbreaking design or superior technical specifications. The YF-23 stealth fighter may have shown immense promise, but it ultimately lost out to the F-22 Raptor, one of the most technologically advanced aircraft ever to be deployed by the United States. But where does the F-22 rank in history? Check out the Magellan TV documentary Top 10 Warfare Aircraft to find out the top 10 most influential military airplanes that changed combat forever. Magellan TV is a new type of documentary streaming membership created by filmmakers that brings over 2,000 documentaries to all of your devices without interruption. Visit try.magellantv.com slash darkskies or click the link in the description below to get a free one month trial. Watch the Magellan TV series Top 10 Warfare to see rare archival footage and learn how the most important battles, weapons, secrets, and more rank in military history. Support Dark Skies and check out Magellan TV with your free one month trial today. Even more new programs are being added on a weekly basis. Be sure to click on the link in the description below or visit try.magellantv.com slash darkskies. Advanced Tactical Fighter In 1981, the US Air Force started the Advanced Tactical Fighter program to develop a next generation air superiority fighter. At the time, the Soviet Union had developed aircraft like the Sukhoi Su-27 and the Mikoyan MiG-29. These were meant to compete with the fourth generation fighters of the US, like the F-15 Eagle. After American reconnaissance satellites caught the first glimpse of the advanced Soviet prototype fighters, discussions with US airspace companies began. To face the Soviet threat, the Air Force envisioned a program that could combine emerging technologies and concepts like stealth, supercruising, and short takeoff and landing. By 1984, the program finally defined the new fighter's requirements, super cruise speed, a maximum takeoff weight of 50,000 pounds, and a mission radius of 800 miles. A year later, the Air Force issued a request for proposals. Grumman, Rockwell, Boeing, General Dynamics, Lockheed, Northrop, and McDonnell Douglas each presented their plan in 1986 and later grouped into two competing teams. Northrop and McConnell Douglas were selected as finalist partners with their YF-23A design. They were challenged by Lockheed, Boeing, and General Dynamics with the YF-22A. Both teams were given 50 months to build and test their prototypes. The Air Force anticipated buying 750 fighters. A variation of the winner's aircraft would also be used by the US Navy to replace the F-14 Tomcat. The winner would go down in history as America's air superiority fighter of the 21st century. The YF-23 The Northrop YF-23 was designed to focus on the US Air Force requirements of stealth, survivability, and ease of maintenance. Therefore, agility wasn't one of its priorities. The fighter had a range of about 2,800 miles, which could be extended with in-flight refueling. Two prototypes of the aircraft were built, the Black Widow II and the Grey Ghost. The Black Widow flew with Pratt & Whitney engines and had its maiden flight on August 27, 1990. It was painted in charcoal gray and carried a painting of the characteristic red markings found in Black Widow spiders. Its radar cross-section signature also looked like a spider web. The second prototype, the Grey Ghost, flew with General Electric engines and was painted in two different shades of gray. The aircraft had diamond-shaped wings and an all-moving V-tail that gave it an unconventional appearance. By focusing on stealth, Northrop designed the plane with a radar evading profile and a system of turbofan engines that prevented detection by infrared missiles. The YF-23 had a cockpit placed near its nose and fit only one pilot. To reduce costs, the aircraft shared its cockpit and nose wheel components from the F-15 Eagle and the F-A-18's main landing gear. This eventually put it at a disadvantage with its rival, which had more advanced cockpit technology and better electronics. However, the aircraft's design was innovative in many other ways. The plane needed to fly at supersonic speed without needing an afterburner, while also maintaining low observability. 
to achieve this, the Grey Ghost was designed with a boundary layer control system consisting of panels with small holes drilled in them. The system sucked in the boundary layer air before it entered the air intake. Conventional air intakes, in contrast, often needed to be separate from the fuselage, reducing stealth. The weapon bay configuration was also unique. It was a deep coffin-like cavity installed between the cockpit and the air intakes, covered by two swinging doors. There, the aircraft could carry three staggered AIM-120s and two AIM-9s attached to the bay doors. However, the launch system was never installed in the prototypes. As innovative as it was, the configuration also had one significant defect. If one of the missiles jammed, the ones behind it would become impossible to use. The Northrop team was very confident in their aircraft. John Shupek, who designed the back end of the plane, said to the National Interest, quote, Northrop ATF team was really proud of our aircraft. We absolutely knew that it was the better of the two airplanes. The YF-22 Parallel to the creation of the Grey Ghost, Lockheed was developing the YF-22 Raptor. Both aircraft went through a series of evaluations, including 11 months of flight tests. The Grey Ghost supercruised twice with different engines. The prototype reached a top speed of Mach 2.1 and a maximum angle of attack of 25 degrees. Despite having a weapon bay, no missiles were fired during the tests. In total, the plane flew for 65.2 hours. In contrast, during one impressive test, the Raptor fired AIM-9 Sidewinder and AIM-120 AMRAM missiles from its internal weapons bays. Its maximum speed was also over Mach 2, although the Grey Ghost was generally considered a faster plane. The YF-22 accumulated 91.6 hours of flight time. On April 23, 1991, the Air Force announced the Raptor as the winner of the program. A matter of credibility. The YF-22 and the YF-23 were considered equally good. They could maneuver at the same trimmed and high angle of attack. The two of them could also carry eight air-to-air -air missiles internally. Although they were both considered magnificent designs, the YF-23 was actually seen as a better performer overall. Northrop's design was also viewed as superior, thanks to the sleek lines of the aircraft. So why did the Raptor beat the Grey Ghost? In the end, it was a matter of credibility, and not technical superiority. Experts agree that Lockheed was better at marketing their aircraft, and taking advantage of its competitors' weak spots. Northrop had been suffering from four years of a bad reputation due to considerable cost overruns while building the B-2 Spirit stealth bomber. The company was even indicted in falsifying tests on a nuclear weapons guidance system, and lost a contract to produce the MX missile guidance system. After a dozen congressional committee hearings and Pentagon audits of all their programs, Northrop's image was irrevocably damaged. Lockheed succeeded in making the Air Force think they could manage the fighter program better. As the defense security budget suffered after the end of the Cold War, the Air Force needed to convince Congress that the program was in the best hands. It also didn't hurt that the Lockheed bid was substantially lower. After the contract was awarded to Lockheed, members of the Air Force confirmed that they had more confidence that the company could deliver the aircraft at the estimated cost. In an interview with the LA Times, aerospace analyst Paul Nisbet said, quote, Northrop has been under the gun for years. The Pentagon does not want to spend its political hay by running against the grain. Lockheed also succeeded in showing off the capabilities of their fighter. Thanks to a brisk flight test schedule, the company demonstrated how well the Raptor performed in dogfights, how it could attack at an angle of 60 degrees and pull sharp 9G turns. When Air Combat Command pilots witnessed Lockheed's demonstration, they were immediately enamored with their fighter. Although the Grey Ghost could make the same maneuver, they failed by simply not showing it off. Other theories state that Lockheed was selected because it had no new fighter programs, and the United States wanted to keep it alive as an air framer. On the other hand, Northrop already had the F-A-18EF and a very expensive B-2. In the end, the YF-22 won the competition and eventually developed into the F-22 Raptor. The aircraft entered service in 2005 and is currently considered a fundamental element of the U.S. tactical air power. But after the fall of the Berlin Wall and the disappearance of the Soviet threat, the Air Force reduced the number of F-22s it initially planned to buy. Meanwhile, Northrop kept building the fighters that eventually became more popular as years went by. Looking back, experts agree that the YF-23 would have performed just as well, but the Grey Ghost had better stealth and longer range at a supersonic speed. Those qualities would have made it a better adversary against new potential threats, like the Chinese J-20 and the Russian PAK-FA. The innovative weapons bay configuration of the Grey Ghost would have also been highly valued nowadays. Indeed, similar designs are still used three decades later. After remaining in storage until 1996, the Grey Ghost was sent to the National Museum of the U.S. Air Force and to the Western Museum of Flight in Torrance, California. The planes have been refurbished, and sometimes they get released for tours. Later on, a naval variant of the F-23 was proposed to replace the F-14 Tomcat. 
The NATF-23 had vital differences, like conventional twin tails and a diamond wing positioned far in the back. The aircraft was meant to carry Hughes AIM-54 Phoenix air-to-air missiles and be a similar size as the Tomcat. Eventually, the program was scrapped after the Navy decided to modify the F-14 to be able to operate it until the year 2015. In 2004, Northrop Grumman presented a YF-23-based bomber for the U.S. Air Force. And four years later, that project was scrapped in favor of a long-range bomber and later on for the Next Generation Bomber Program. Meanwhile, the Grey Ghost has won a legendary status in military aviation circles. Rumor has it that the design based on the aircraft lives in the clandestine realm. Northrop Grumman and Lockheed have competed many times since, and have shown they're both still going strong. In 2015, Northrop beat a team formed by Boeing and Lockheed to build a new generation stealth bomber for the U.S. Air Force. The $55 million B-21 Raider will start flying in 2040. Soon, however, we might see both companies compete again to build the replacement of the Raptor. Thanks for watching. And thanks again to Magellan TV for sponsoring this video and for offering a free one-month trial to Dark Skies viewers. Please visit try.magellantv.com slash darkskies or click the link in the description below for access to more than 2,000 documentaries streaming across all your devices without interruption.